In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how a user can go about using the RS Poll Catalog to model a composite segmented poll. Included with OCalc are several additional catalogs that can be accessed. We do have an additional YouTube video that describes the process through which a user can go about adding additional catalogs. As you can see, I've already added my RS Poll Catalog here. A segmented poll can be started by going under the File menu, down to a new poll, and then selecting a segmented poll. This initial warning tells you that you don't have a default load case established for a segmented poll, so we just have to remember to add a load case later on. So I'm just going to hit OK. And you'll see the OCalc has started modeling the segmented poll, but there's no actual poll displayed over here in your 3D view, but your inventory does indicate that you have started to model something. Previously, the RS Poll catalog had only included this RS Poll sections list and these are all the different sections that can be used in creating a segmented poll. Now, from the RS Poll website, you can obtain this list, which includes all of the different lengths and different arrangements you can use to build your segmented poll. Now, we recently updated the RS Poll catalog in OCalc to include all of the different arrangements from that list, which can be accessed here. You can see that all of these numbers correspond to ID numbers included in that list, and the arrangements match as well. So from a user point of view, you can actually just go ahead and use one of these poll templates and make adjustments as necessary when you're doing an RS poll. Now, if we were to go about modeling a segmented poll from scratch, the first thing I would do is pull up my list here and choose an example to start with, say this first line here. Now, we're being told that this one should be 45 feet in length. It's going to use the M3, M2, and M1 sections, and it tells you right here that this is the stacking sequence. We would start with an M3, then add the M2, then add the M1. It's also telling us that we're going to be cutting the M1 piece by 1.2 feet, and it also tells you the embedment depth. Okay, so we're going to use all this information to go about building the structure from scratch, starting with this M3 section and changing its setting depth to 6.5. So I can grab my M3 section from right here in my sections folder and drag it over. And you'll see I get my little plus sign, which means I can add it to the main structure here. It's going to ask you for a height. Here is where you can put in negative 6.5, and that will take into consideration the 6.5 foot setting depth. So once we hit OK, you can see that a portion of your section here is set below the ground line, which is indicated by the shading that you see. You can also take a look at your data entry window where it's telling you clearly that this is a pole segment rather than a pole. And you can see all the different attributes related to it, including height, which is where we can see our negative 6.5 foot setting depth. Now you're also going to see a length, a lap length, and additional information regarding uh, the radius at the tip and the radius at the, ba at the base of the section, including the segment weight. Now, if you choose to, you can adjust your length. This is what we're going to be doing for that top piece where we have to cut off 1.2 feet. And then your lap length is essentially your overlap between your sections, you may have to adjust this number to ensure that your overall height is accurate. Now, if I bring my list back up, I can see that the next section I have to add is the M2 section, and then just the M1 section where I can cut off that 1.2 feet. So in OCalc, I'm just going to move to the next section I need to add. I'm going to drag it over and drop it onto my main structure where it will stack it on top of the existing segment. So as far as my height here, I'm just going to enter a value of 0. And you'll see what that does is drop us back down to the ground here. So you really don't want to make any adjustments to that height window when it pops up. It automatically populates with what it considers to be the, the logical option. So I'm going to do a Control z and undo adding that segment. I'm going to grab it again and drop it onto my structure, and I'm just going to hit OK. 
you'll see that now it's placed in a better position where it is still overlapping with this section. That's fine. You don't want to see the bottom of the M2 section at the very top of your M3 section because in reality these are overlapping slightly. So next we can add our M1 section. So I'm just going to grab from here and drag over onto our structure. And I'm going to just leave this default value alone. Now that we've got all three of our sections on here, we just need to adjust the length of our top piece. So if I have my M1 piece selected and I go down to my data entry window, I can see this length attribute here. Now I know I need to adjust this by 1.2 feet. So what you can do is actually, first I'm going to double click in this window. You'll see that I can start typing if I choose to. And I'm going to select Control C to copy this value that's already here. And then I'm going to push Control E to open up this expression evaluation window. Now in this window, I'm going to do a Control V to paste my value and do minus 1.2. OCalc knows that I mean 1.2 feet, and you'll see that there's a result value here. When we push OK, it fills in that result, and I can just push Enter, and I can see that my top piece got a little bit shorter, and now we've taken into account that 1.2 feet that needs to be cut off. Now, before we get a readout in our capacity window, we do need to add a load case. So I'm going to switch back over into my master catalog and just put a load case on here. Let's say NESC rule 250B, and I'll do a grade C heavy. And I'm just going to drag this over onto my structure. And you'll see that once I've added a load case, um, it actually starts calculating uh, what the capacity utilization is. So once you've gone and constructed your segmented pole, you can go about adding additional components to it, your spans and additional equipment. Now one thing to keep in mind is that this table also includes different measurements for the overall weight, the tip overall diameter, the base overall diameter, the taper. So you can go ahead and check all of these attributes also. Um, you can check those in your data entry window. You want to make sure that your overall height corresponds to this 45 foot minus the 6.5 foot setting depth. So again, this list can just be accessed on the RS poll website. However, now that we've updated the RS poll catalog, you actually don't need to go about doing that if you're just using um, one of the arrangements in that list because they're already created for you. Now to go about using one of the already created templates, I'm just going to close the structure we just built. What you can do is once you've added the RS poll catalog, you just go into one of these folders here and just drag over the entire structure. It will ask you if you want to start a new poll using this as a template. You can just select yes. Again, you get the warning that we don't have a load case set up, so it's just reminding you to add one. And you'll see your structure is already built. We can hit expand here to see all the different sections that are included. And you'll see your structure is already finished.